I want to set the stage. Many of you are perplexed and confounded when you hear Joe Biden talk about how he supports Israel and yet how he makes other statements undermining Israel, how his Secretary of State and National Security Advisor are working full-time to undermine Israel as well. It gets back to the United States. It gets back to American Marxism. It all gets back to this book. Let's start with our own border. This will provide some perspective. Why is our border wide open? Why is our border wide open? Yes, to turn Texas blue, but really, with all the inhumanity and mayhem that's taking place on the border, the hundreds of thousands of Americans who've died during the course of the Biden administration through fentanyl and other activities, allowing Mexican gangs to get footholds in our cities, to allow the drug cartels to have footholds in every major metropolitan area in every state in the union, to overrun our school systems, to overrun our law enforcement, to overrun our towns. What kind of a president, what kind of administration would do this intentionally, purposely, to their own country, to their own people? It would be an administration that is so radicalized, so radicalized that it views America as an illegitimate country, certainly parts of America as illegitimate as American. What am I talking about? Well, if you read American Marxism, you would know that there's a whole school of Marxist thought out there that says California, Texas, most of the West, Arizona, New Mexico, they don't belong to the United States. They don't belong to, quote unquote, the white Europeans who came to the United States conquered parts of the United States, were pioneers in the United States, that these lands were taken by a colonialistic, imperialistic, white European majority eventually that took these lands from the Mexicans, took these lands from Native Americans and so forth and so on. So why shouldn't the border be open? There's no such thing. This is what they're taught. This is what people are hearing in our college campuses, in scholarship. It's not me just discerning this, it's them. There's no such thing as an illegal alien, unless you want to consider the white European settlers in the United States as illegal aliens, because they don't belong here. And so this mentality, obviously, uh, is widespread in the Biden administration, because the Biden administration is really the third term of the Obama administration. And Obama was, in many respects, an American-hating, Israel-hating radical in many respects. And he unleashed these movements, many of them, certainly gave them impetus uh, during the course of his presidency and appointed people who are very, very radical. And I believe this is exactly what's going on on the southern border. So it doesn't matter how many American citizens die. It doesn't matter how many American citizens are on uh, fentanyl and have the effects of fentanyl. It just doesn't matter what's going on on the southern border. This is a realignment. How can you talk about American sovereignty and American borders when America stole these lands? You see what I'm getting at? Now let's go to Israel. Now the fact that the Jews are the indigenous peoples of Judea and Samaria, which they wrongly call the West Bank of Jordan, Jordan didn't even exist, and the fact that the state of Israel slightly over 75 years ago, was established in the areas that belonged to the Jews for thousands and thousands of years, many of the people who came back to that part of the world, particularly after the Holocaust, became white Europeans, you see. So the Jews are white Europeans. They're no different than the Americans in the United States, according to this ideology. They come back. And whether it's the Ottoman Empire, whether it's the British, the League of Nations, the United Nations, and here they are, they're carved out this little piece of land. And then it expands in 1967, that war, and then the Yom Kippur War and other wars that followed. And now they're occupiers. Now they're occupying land that doesn't belong to them. I mean, after all, these are really white European individuals, just like in America. And just like America, they're imperialistic and they're colonialistic. 
they took land from and are oppressing non-white people, brown people. I'm telling you the mentality, just like in the United States. And so Israel's borders are not legitimate. And Israel, like the United States, is now a militaristic power. And it's able to hold on to this, these ill-begotten lands through the support of the United States and through its own military power, which is, they argue, illegitimate. And so what's the resolution to this? The resolution is that Israel must not win when it comes to Gaza. That Judea and Samaria, which is basically the birthplace of Judaism, that Judea and Samaria must be, quote unquote, returned. To whom? The Palestinians. Well, they were never there. It doesn't matter. We need a two-state solution. But what about the ideology of, the, of Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood and all the rest of the terrorist organizations? They're not interested in states. They're interested in caliphates. It doesn't matter. We American Marxists, we're looking at this through the lens of how we perceive the world to be and how we perceive the world was and how we perceive the world needs to be. And that is what's going on with Lincoln and Sullivan and Malley, the same people who worked for Barack Obama. That's why Barack Obama put out that outrageous statement. He's pretty much in hiding and quiet. He doesn't want to reveal his invisible hand, but he puts out that outrageous statement, basically underscoring everything I'm telling you. And that's why you scratch your heads on American policy. On the one hand, they run over to Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. They embrace the prime minister. They tell the Israelis, we stand with you no matter what. We have your backs over and over again. And that's another strategy called the hold them tight strategy. That is, hold Israel tightly while you pull the shiv out of your pocket and you stab them in the back. That is exactly what's taking place right now. It may seem shocking to many of you, but it shouldn't be. If you follow Thomas Friedman at the New York Times, and I'm sure most of you don't, but I have to, and I only do so well after I've had a meal. When you look at that, you can see the ideology there. You can see the ideology with Blinken in the past when he worked for Obama's deputy secretary of state. Uh, Sullivan, Jake Sullivan's actually written about this ideological approach. And then you say to yourself, but why are they helping the Iranians? The Iranians keep attacking us. We see tunnels to towers, wounded soldiers, we see all these things. It's not just Afghanistan. It's what the Iranians have done to all of our men and women. Why do we treat them like we do? Why are we such patsies? We have two massive, basically, naval armadas over there that could do severe damage to her. Well, we can't expand the war. Well, we're not expanding anything. We're defending ourselves. But the language, the propaganda. They're trying to create, as Michael Duran wrote in the tablet, a complete realignment in the Middle East. Because Israel's like America. They're the oppressor. Oppressor, oppressed. Nobody used to talk about this until I wrote about it in American Marxism and came up with the concept myself. Oppressor and oppressed. America is the oppressor. Israel's now the oppressor. We are militaristic. We're interfering in other countries. And yet, ironically, it's Biden and Blinken that are interfering like nobody else in the Middle East. So Iran has to be built up, particularly after the Shah of Iran, where the militaristic United States, the CIA, help bring the Shah of Iran to power. And the people rose up and got rid of him. People never rose up and got rid of him. It was the Islamists, the Islamists, who now the Biden administration is supporting in Iran. They're funding Iran. They've lifted all waivers on Iran. They rearmed Iran. They made it possible for Iran to destroy and murder their own people, who are rising up to overthrow that regime because the people hate it. They say the Biden administration, Biden does, I believe in democracy, not autocracy. He's much more comfortable with autocrats than he is with small-D Democrats. That's 100 percent certain. So our entire policy is built on this ideology that Israel is the problem, that the United States is the problem, not Hamas, not Islamic Jihad, not the, the Islamo-Nazi regime in Iran, uh, not any of these entities. We are the problem, and Israel's the problem. And so what we need to do with Israel is rearrange its borders, make it even a smaller country, which becomes absolutely indefensible absolutely indefensible, 
give the PLO that was founded by Yasser Arafat a known terrorist. And there's still terrorists killing Israelis and Americans out of the so-called moderate Palestinian regime. In fact, just a few days ago, uh, eight Israelis were shot in Jerusalem, three of whom died, but they say it's Hamas connected. Everything Hamas connected, even though Fatah, the PLO, and Hamas are at political odds, they support each other ultimately against us. So for Iran, we're the big Satan and Israel's the little Satan. And for Blinken and Sullivan and Malley and even Biden now, it's the same thing. The U.S. is the big Satan and Israel's the little Satan. And so now is the opportunity for the Obama team, Obama, Biden, Biden, Obama, doesn't matter, to exploit the situation in which Israel's fighting for its survival. And they're using the alliances that, that has been built with Israel over Democrat and Republican presidents, Democrat and Republican congresses for almost a century. The provision of weapons, the sharing of intelligence, they are now using that to threaten, blackmail, pressure Israel to capitulate, to lose the war against Hamas. Because the theory is, you see, the Israelis can't go in there and denazify Gaza the way we had to denazify Germany before Germany was free, with the way we had to uh, change Imperial Japan before Imperial Japan was granted its freedom and so forth. No, 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 no. For Israel, they need to stop and stop now. They don't even want them to continue the fighting. And should they continue to fight, even with all the handcuffs that are going to be placed on them and pressured to be placed on them by Biden, Blinken, Sullivan, and the rest of the reprobates, should Israel happen to win? And they better not go into South Gaza. My God, that's where all the people are. But that's where Hamas has moved to as well. They don't want Israel to win. They're using our weapons as blackmail. They're talking about carving out almost a third of Israel, maybe a fourth or a third of Israel, and handing it to the very enemy that's been talking about destroying Israel, while they're still funding Iran to the tune of hundreds of billions of dollars. And here's my question to you, America. Where are the Republicans in Congress? Isn't this a five alarm fire? Doesn't this affect us? You better believe it does. What exactly is our policy to prevent Iran from getting nuclear weapons? We don't have one. And they're on the precipice. Even the UN is ringing the bells. And if the UN's ringing the bells, you know it's serious because they love Iran. It's a huge problem. This is a rogue foreign policy. This is a foreign policy that's being conducted in the shadows. This is a foreign policy where they're using the propaganda of their favorite media outlets, CNN, MSNBC, The New York Times, The Washington Post, most of the networks, their favorite columnists to push their agenda. When the American people, we do not have a comprehensive, fulsome explanation of what this foreign policy is and where it's taking us. You know why? Because under Obama and under Biden, they believe ambiguity, public contradictions, confusions, secret shuttle diplomacy that Blinken's involved in now nonstop with Arab countries, through the back door with the terrorists, through Qatar and so forth and so on. The less you know, the better. That's the way they view it, because if you actually figured out what they're doing, you'd be disgusted. I hope you were able to follow this beginning to end, because this explains exactly what's going on and why Israel is now in grave and dire straits because of its alliance with the United States. And we are in grave and dire straits because of this administration. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.